Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Now we are going to discuss about different types of heart blocks. When we are talking about heart block, we should understand that it is the block in the conduction system, not in the coronaries. So conduction system, we already learned that SA node to AV node conduction goes from AV node, it will go to the ventricle. Now the problem is in the, this area from SA node to AV node. If there is a problem, it can produce conduction disorders. So we'll see what are the types of heart blocks. There are three important types, first degree heart block, second degree heart block, third degree heart block. We'll see what is first degree heart block. We'll see what is second degree heart block. We'll see what is third degree heart block. So what we are going to see here is, suppose there is a, so from SNO to AV node, we'll see the first normal thing, SNO to AV node, conduction, it starts from the P wave to the QRS complex. Normally it takes 3 to 5 small squares, 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. This is the time from P wave to QRS complex. If there is a problem in the conduction like this, so SNO to AV node we'll see. SNO to AV node conduction comes. If there is a minimal problem here, some conduction delay here, what happens is PR interval prolongs. So normal PR interval from more than 5 squares. So normally is 3 to 5 small squares. Here PR interval is prolonged. This is called as first degree heart block. So P wave come, then QRS complex is delayed. That is first degree heart block. Now, first degree heart block you get in uh, drugs like uh, drugs like beta blockers, diltiazem, verapamil, digoxin, and some uh, ischemic heart diseases. Uh, conditions like uh, uh, like uh, uh, age or some toxins. All these things you can get first degree heart block, but that will not produce any conduction abnormalities in the patient. Only in ECG you will see prolonged PR interval. So that is first degree heart block. Now we will see what is second degree heart block. The conduction from SA node to AV node. It's little more problem here. Some problem. So what happens? There are two types of second degree heart block. One is Mobitz type 1. Other one is Mobitz type 2. So, Mobitz type 1 is Wenke-Pax phenomena that is progressive prolongation of PR interval. One after this there is no QRS complex. So, what is happening is this PR interval is normal, then PR interval is prolonged then still prolong after this there is no qrs complex then next wave occurs so here one pr interval is missed qrs complex is missed so this is progressive prolongation of pr interval one qrs complex is missing this is type 1 mobitz type 1 heart block or you can call it as wenge backs phenomenon now another type is in second degree heart block, another type we will see conduction occurs. There is some problem in the conduction system. So you can see here. All PR intervals are normal. Suddenly after one PR interval there is no QRS complex. Again it may come as normal. 1P there is missing. Here there is no PR interval. So here there is no QRS. Here also there is no QRS. So this is type 2 or Mobitz type 2 second degree heart block. Whatever, is the, uh, whatever it is in these two types what we are observing is you are missing one QRS complex. That means ventricle is not pumping that area. That uh, that 
that time ventricle is not pumping if this repeats like now you are seeing after four or five beats one is missing if every one or two beats it is missing then ventricle pumping will not be adequate to fill the peripheral circulation so this is uh, this is uh, mobitz type 1 or wenckebach phenomena this is mobitz type 2 wherever in both this condition p is there but qrs complex are missing that means ventricle is not beating during that time if this uh, uh, missing beat repeatedly coming means there will be severe compromisation in the ventricular pumping so this is a uh, second degree heart block if they come very frequently you can call it as high degree high grade second degree heart block high grade second degree heart block patient will be more symptomatic that means the pumping will not occur during that high grade second degree heart block the pumping towards the brain may come down patient have repeated syncopal attacks dizziness vertigo all these things now we'll see what is third degree heart block third degree heart block means little more complicated is s note av note conduction there is complete block here so there is complete block here what happens is here also p wave comes regularly that means that means atrium contracts regularly atrium contracts regularly but that all this atrial contraction may not go to the ventricle at all there is complete block but if when the current is not getting into the main circulation what happens is ventricle also beats if the atrium fails junction may take over the function if junction also fails it may be taken over by the ventricle but the ventricle rate will be normally 40 45 50 so you can see here p wave come regularly QRS complex also come regularly. So, P waves are coming regularly. QRS complex come regularly. There is no association between P waves and QRS complex. This is called as complete heart block or third degree heart block. So, what we are seeing here is first degree heart block means prolonged conduction. Second degree heart block means missing QRS complex. In first type, there is progressive PR interval and missing one QRS complex. Other type 2, there is no progression but missing QRS complex. Third one, totally irregular conduction, totally irregular responses from the atrium and ventricle. Atrial beats come regularly, POS are regular, QRS complex are regular, but there is no association between P and QRS complex. For every P wave, there is no QRS complex. Corresponding QRS complex is not there because there is no actual, actual conduction. So, high grade second degree or third degree heart block is there in a patient. We have to pace the patient. If we don't pace the patient, what happens is sometimes this patient will go to complete cardiac arrest. You can see flat lines. So, you can remember this like uh, this manner. So normally when we are joining to the course, professor comes, students come regularly. So professor come, student come, it's a regular pattern. By second year, professor comes here and student will be late by 5 minutes, 5 or 6 minutes. That is first degree art block. Here, Mobitz type 1 or Wenckebach's phenomenon, what happens is, one day the students is slightly delayed, second day little more delay, third day little more delay, fourth day he missed the class. Professor come regularly, but this student is slightly delayed, delayed, he missed one class. Other type of students, they come regularly, after professor come, he come regularly, but suddenly without any notice, he may miss the class, he may take leave. Here also he takes leave. Occasionally, if it is happening, it's okay. But if it is occurring every alternate day or uh, third day, then it will go to high grade problem. Okay. Now, what happens is in final year, in final year class, professor come regularly, student come regularly, but you will not see whether professor is there in the class or not. 
he also come but his number of attendance is very very low if we don't treat this high grade second degrees and third degrees he will fail the exam so that is only an example so that you will understand very easily so we have discussed about pr interval and problems in the conduction system of a heart first degree heart block second degree heart block third degree heart block first degree heart block there is no treatment required if the patient is on drugs like beta blocker diltiazem verapamil it has to be titrated or if the patient is having already first degree heart block don't try to start beta blockers and all in this patient second degree heart block if one or two are occurring like this he may be evaluated properly and find out whether any electrolyte imbalance any other toxins are there if he is having high grade second degree heart block he may require temporary pacing or some patients may require permanent pacing third degree heart block definitely he requires permanent pacing but according to acls if there is a bradycardia first response of every doctor will be giving atropine you understood that there is complete block here atropine may not work in this case but whatever it is bradycardia symptomatic bradycardia in emergency room first line drug of choice is uh, atropine but atropine will not work here you have to pace this patient to get a normal rate if the rate comes down drastically to 30 35 they have significant pr- problem in the central circulation like they can have dizziness giddiness loss of consciousness seizure like problem all these things so we have discussed about different types of heart blocks thank you